what's the hardest thing about motherhood? The hardest thing about motherhood. <sighs> well, I would say it is not easy being a mom. It really is not. That's hard because they don't listen. Hey guys, I'm back and today I will be doing a Q&A. I went online and I asked for people to send in some questions that they have for mom entrepreneurs. But before, before we get into this video, please like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And welcome back to those that are returning. Thank you guys again so much for watching. So, as I said, I on Facebook and I went on Instagram and was like, hey, Ask me some questions that you want to know about being a mom entrepreneur. So, so I, I got some nice questions sent in to me. And I'm going to give everybody a shout out and I'm going to link their channel if they have an Instagram or if they have a business. I will shout it out below and I will shout it out in the video as well. So the first question is from... What are some challenges you face as a mom entrepreneur? So when I first became a mom, I had my storefront. And I brought my son to work with me every day. I brought day. my son to my store with me until he was 11 months old. So I finally found a daycare that I felt comfortable with. So it was challenging balancing having my son at the store, making sure he has everything he needed, and also maintaining the customers that came in the store. I know a lot of people aren't for kids, but it's my business, and I had no other choice but to bring my son to the store with me. So it was challenging sometimes because, you know, kids get sick, and I would have to leave early, and that was really rough because I had to make sure I made my money, but at the end of the day, my child comes first. So sometimes it come, becomes challenging to have a transition from having my storefront to just being online. And also with us having this whole pandemic right now, they're not allowing the kids to be at the daycares and some daycares are shut down. But the particular one that I'm going to right now, um, that I have the kids going to right now, they are only allowing essential workers to send their kids to this daycare. So I have to have a whole routine, a full day planned out, a whole schedule every time match. I have to make sure that I get my work done with my website, make sure I have my emails done. But sometimes things happen, I get behind, but I'll be up. I'll stay up late trying to make sure I get all the emails and all the orders filled for that day. I hope that that answered the question. So I have another question from, what does your morning routine look like and does it include your children or just you? My routine, for all the moms out there, you know the routine includes your children. They are always first. Sometimes I will still find myself in my pajamas for a very long time, like until the afternoon, because I make sure my kids are up. My son's actually in potty training right now. So I get him up in the morning and make sure he's in the potty. So we make sure we have the same schedule, the routine going. Uh, I go ahead and take them to the kitchen and get them fed for breakfast and then we go and just get them dressed and we do our activities. While they're napping, I go ahead and just do my work while they're sleeping. So while they're, once I get through the day of them getting their breakfast and their lunch and activities and then their nap, the nap time is kind of a balance there. It's like, should I get a nap with them? <laughs> or should I go ahead and get some work done and answer some emails? Sometimes I take the nap <laughs> because I be so tired. So she also asks me, 
Are you going to install entrepreneurship into your children or will you also show them the college workplace route and let them choose? Honestly, I'm going to make sure my children know the game. I'm going to make sure that they know a hustle and the opportunities that are out there to be an entrepreneur. But at the end of the day, I'm going to definitely let my children choose what they want to do with their life. All you can do is encourage them and let them know some things that they possibly, that let them know some things that possibly can help them. I initially went to college. I dropped out of college my junior year. I got out of college my junior year because I had opened my store and it was really hard balancing that out. So I decided to just go ahead and just do what I wanted to do and run my business. But you want to go to college? Yeah. You want to be a hustler? Yeah. You want to get that money? <laughs> So definitely, like I said, I would definitely educate them on being an entrepreneur. <laughs> what the hardest thing about motherhood? The hardest thing about motherhood. <sighs> well, I would say it is not easy being a mom. It really is not. <laughs> That's hard, because they don't listen. I done told this little boy today to yeah. stop jumping on the bed so many times. Yeah, you are and you just don't yeah. stop? I don't get it. I don't get it. <laughs> Getting them to listen. What about me tell you? She said stop jumping on the bed. What did mommy say? Stop jumping on the bed. What did the, the five little monkeys do? Five little monkeys? And one fell off and bumped his head? So, why are you jumping? Why are you jumping? That's hard. Getting them to listen. <laughs> Any more kids? I have two children. And I think I'm good. I'm good. I got one boy, one girl. I love them so much. How do you balance business and motherhood? Yeah, I kind of already answered that. Every day is a new day and the children are very surprising. Every day is something new. Get down. See? See? You don't listen. But I get the job done. I definitely do. So the next question is from... <laughs> How old are your little ones? How old are you? Two? Two? And Genesis is one. One. How old were you when you got pregnant? Hi. <laughs> well, I was 30 years old when I had my son. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> and 32 when I had my daughter. What are you guys doing? Yeah. A little bit about my labor story. Ooh, both of my labor stories are so memorable. Both of them, I will never forget. With my son, um, 
my water broke. I was just chilling and like, all I heard, well, I felt like a pop or whatever. I felt a pop and I stood up and the water was everywhere. It didn't stop for a long time. I had went to the hospital. I went to the hospital and it was still leaking. Like it was like nonstop. So they took me to the room and it was like this basically monitoring me and I went to my labor room. I was in there and they had a, a student work on me and I had no idea that they had students giving epidurals. They gave me two epidurals. Because the first epidural did not work. So I had already called my best friend. She was on her way. She was on her way to the hospital. Mind you, she lives in Tennessee, so I lived in St. Louis at the time. And she drove down there. But once she got there, I was like, I'm in so much pain. I feel everything. She's like, you're not supposed to feel anything right now. Like, So she was like, um, someone fix this. She does not play. That's my best friend from like middle school. How cool is that? So they were apologizing and they were like, we're gonna give you another epidural. And then this time they actually had someone oversee the person to do it this time around. I'm like, first of all, why is this happening? But anyway, I was in so much pain. I was like, let's get this done right now. So there was people there, like friends was there. Um, and then it just seemed like there was so many people in the room. I was like, what is going on? There's like hell of people in here. Is this sanitary? I don't know. But once I got the second epidural, everything was smooth sailing. I was in a better mood. And then like my son, he just came out just like that. Come on. <laughs> is my daughter my daughter on the other hand she decided she wanted to stay in in my belly a little bit longer than everybody else normally would she was like no i think i'm gonna stay in here it's nice and warm <laughs> nice and warm and i so was she, like past my due date and everything i was like okay diva come on out of there so the day that i went to the hospital with my daughter i was actually at the hospital for my son, because he had a little cold and I wanted to make sure he was good. <laughs> Mind you, we were in that children's hospital for so long, so long. So I started feeling like contractions and <laughs> I ended up having to lay down <laughs> because they're like, uh-uh, and -uh. here we don't deliver babies, but we take care of children, but we do not deliver them. So you need to lay down yourself. So I laid down. And after they were done seeing my son that day, I ended up going to the hospital myself. We went home first. I'm like, it's just not stopping. Luckily for me, my um, kid's grandpa is a doctor. So I told him what was going on and he was like, you need to go. <laughs> like now. So I went to the hospital. I was, I was dilated, but not as much. My daughter, she was definitely a diva. I will say that. I was in labor with my daughter for 24 hours. 24 hours. So I was dilated a little bit. Like, I think it was like five centimeters. I think that was like the minimum that you can be in order to stay. And it was game over. So, so today is January 8th. 2019 waiting on Genesis to arrive they have me hooked up to this and listening to the heartbeat to the heart. my water never broke with my daughter until after what was it um, I think it was like nine hours of being in labor like they were trying to wait for my 
water to break when I finally asked for epidural. And I was like, wait a minute. I don't want no students working on me because it is very dangerous, very dangerous if they mess up. So this time around, can you believe this epidural did not work? Like it wore off after being in labor for so long. I was in labor for 24 hours. 24 hours, that's crazy. Uh, crazy, crazy. <laughs> so it finally broke in my bed. I was like, well, <clears throat> the water just broke. <laughs> so that happened and I just could not believe. They're like, press the button for the epidural to like just Get the pain to go away. Honey, listen. That pain was like, nope. Nope, nope, nope. So I just kept pressing. I said, my legs felt like they were blowing like, like balloons. Like I felt so numb in my legs, but it was crazy. Like I felt pain everywhere else. So she finally was to the point to coming out. And I could not push anymore. I was like, uh-uh, I can't do it. It's like, she's right there. I was like, I don't care. <laughs> I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. So I ended up just pushing out one last time and she came through and it was just so beautiful. I cried. I cried. I was like, girl, why? So baby Genesis is here, guys. My pretty girl, Genesis Rain Johnson. I have a question from one of my Facebook friends and she is so bomb. She's a fashion designer. She got some really fire clothes. Y'all better check her out because she'll get you drippity drip. drip, drip. She asks me, what's one thing that you wish you could have known going into it? going into being a business owner or a mom. <laughs> because being a mom, they don't give you no handbooks. They don't say, hey, they do. Well, they, there is, so they, they give you a book called What to Expect When Expecting, but after that, hey, what's up? <laughs> they <a> little preview. <laughs> so, um, with business, I wish I knew about writing up a business plan because if I had a business plan, I think I would have possibly achieved more goals by now. But as a business owner or anything in general, running something on your own, you definitely criticize yourself more than anything because you want it to be successful. Uh, I spent a lot of money into my business, a lot of time, and a lot of sleepless nights. I, mm, I needed some rest, but it was just me. I didn't have a team. I still don't have one. I'm still doing everything by myself. Wish I knew more about how to hire people, but I started finding out more about that later on after the five years of actually having my store. Because a team at the end of the day is what you need running a business. And you can't do everything all by yourself because you will run yourself ragged completely and miss out on the opportunity that you need to grow your business. So the next question is from, she has a YouTube channel as well. She had asked, she asked me how to balance being an entrepreneur and a full-time mom. I actually already answered that question. Um, but you know, when you take every day is different. Every day is always different. Uh, sometimes you'll have a really good day in sales and you're able to get all the emails done. Um, you're, you're able to order inventory smoothly, but some days, are not as great. Sometimes you have you have to face different challenges 
And sometimes your kids don't want to act right. When they tell them to sit down, they don't sit down. You're like, oh my God, I don't feel motivated today because you're already spending so much energy into your children trying to figure out what's going on today. <laughs> Most times it's just nothing. They're just being a child. It's just life. So pace yourself. Try to do the best you can to stay motivated because some days they're not always going to be perfect. Life is just not perfect. So, the next question is from, did you find it hard to balance being a mom and an entrepreneur? Absolutely. Absolutely. But I still did it anyway. It, it's definitely rough. It's definitely rough. It definitely was even harder when I had my store because once I had both of my children, and they were both in daycare. Some days the kids would catch a cold from another child at the daycare and I would have to shut my whole store down and I will miss out on money and try to basically work even harder the next day to basically to cover what I lost that day. At the end of the day, my children will always come first, always. But mama's got it, I got it. Thank you so much for that question. When did you first know you wanted to be an entrepreneur? Well, I was in middle school and I started my own lemonade stand on the corner because my dad was like, you want what? Get you a job. <laughs> and I don't think anybody was hiring a middle school child at that time. So a lot of ideas to make my own money. I was doing hair. I was selling lemonade, candy, flipping the money, doing what I do. So I've always had the hustle in me. Thank you for that question as well. Does being a mom give you a different drive than you think you would have prior? Absolutely. Absolutely, because before it was just me. It was just me. I was like, okay, it's something to do right now. I'm trying to build up my, um, my I'm trying to build up my experience in this field, and so I can look be looked at differently to different corporations if I decided to collaborate with a bigger name. But once I had my children, I had to get it. I had to get it every day. I would stay up late. I would do the best that I could to try to keep my business afloat. Because on your own business, you always see someone doing something similar to what you're doing, but you have to stand apart. So. I worked really hard because I wanted to make sure that I kept them lights on, kept them the rent paid because I had two rents, two light bills, two internets, two of everything. Mm -hmm. I need to make sure that they have what they needed so we can be all right. When it's just you, you're like, okay, I can just do a little bit. I ain't got to work as hard, but you'll work to the max for your children. Absolutely. So she actually has a YouTube channel, so I will link hers below as well. Thank you so much for those questions. Thank you all so much for these questions. I have another question from, what is your favorite outfit from your line? Oh my gosh, I have so many, so many. There's so much. I mostly like my body con dresses. They fit my shape. And it shows that small girls got a little something to work with, too. Petite girls, we might be small, but we are fun size. the hardest part of starting your own business. Being able to finance your business is the hardest part. Because when you're wanting to start a business and you want it to be a certain way you want it to be, you have to have the money. Because money makes the world go round. So I just... Do what I need to do in order to invest into my business, which was a lot, a lot. And keeping it going is the number one thing because you always have to have money in order for it to keep going. Keep investing into yourself. How is the quarantine impacting your business? It's impacting me and a lot of small businesses in a major way. Because now I have come to the part of not 
really going to the post office anymore. I'm able to ship from home. I have to definitely for certain make sure my customers know that everything that I ship out is sanitized because people are scared right now. They're like, I don't know if it's sanitary to order from the certain person because it's not a big name. So as a small business owner, you have to make sure that you are definitely up here on this level. Everything is strict because as a business owner as it is, it's already tough trying to be able to get people to trust you. That is the number one thing is trust because you're just shopping with whoever. You never know if this person is going to ship it out, X, Y, and Z. You never know. So battling that plus the pandemic of people being afraid of germs being on their, their products, you know, it kind of makes them a little nervous. So a lot of people won't shop with you as, as much, but you have to promote and let them know, hey, we are doing everything that we need to do to make sure that you are safe. The processing might be this long because we want to make sure everything is good on our end. So it'll be sanitary for you. What, what's your favorite and least favorite part about doing YouTube? My favorite part is coming up, coming up with new topics every day to keep my channel going. My least favorite part my is favorite part about doing YouTube will be the watch time and the certain verifications that you need to have in order to be verified to do a community on your YouTube channel. Cause I feel like people would engage more if you had a community tab for people that are small, small YouTubers or just someone that's showing that they're consistent with their constant certain amount of subscribers in order to be verified for that. So I think that's a little silly. That should come along with it because engagement with people, if they see that you're posting certain, certain interactive posts that will have them comment, like, and show that they're having certain interests, you can actually bring in the audience that pertains to your channel. So if I was to post something about moms, and someone sees that that's similar to their page or whoever they are subscribing to or whatever they search, that would draw you more subscribers. That's just my opinion. And that was a wonderful question. On to the next question. And her YouTube channel will be linked below and this is her name. What do you find difficult about being an entrepreneur while being a mommy? I feel like sometimes I get distracted with my children, making sure that they have everything that they need for the day. And some days I get really, really tired and I'm like, I just want to just not have to work today. I want to, I want to be able to just chill. And I find myself not getting enough time to do that. And it's really rough because it does affect you whenever you're doing business. And sometimes you have to learn how to find a balance. And I still am working on that because I'm human. I want to chill too. I'd be like, I want to lay down. <laughs> what made you create a I YouTube channel? Create this YouTube channel so I can welcome my customers into my world. Getting to know who I am. And I want to build a new audience pertaining to who I am more related, relatable to. On to the next question. And here's her name, and she also has a YouTube channel too. Shout out to all the mamas that are YouTubers. Hey, hey girl, hey. <laughs> what motivates you to start your channel? Besides what I just said, I um, wanted to get out of my nutshell of being behind the scenes. I have always been behind the scenes. I'm always like, just last year, I decided to take my own, take my own pictures of myself so they can know that my clothes are not just for a certain particular body type. It is for anybody that wants to rock the look. So I wanted them to know, hey, I'm a regular girl. I'm just like you. So creating a YouTube channel gives me the platform to engage with my Welcome customers. Welcome new people 
to know who I am as well. So I wanted to make new friends. Hi! Because <laughs> you never know who you will meet. Because I like to network with people. So being on a new platform will help me network more as well. I'm like, I need to figure out different avenues that helps create more positivity for one. And I want to help people, of course. So I'm always there for people to help them with businesses and tips on mommy routines. And especially for those that are new moms, I can do the tea. Girl, girl, <laughs> it's something else, okay? <laughs> but you can get through it. On to the next question. What is your mothering style and why? I'm definitely old school. And she also has a YouTube channel as well. I'll link that below and this is her name. What type of business do I have? I have an online boutique now. I actually had a storefront in St. Louis, Missouri for five years and I am now online. I sell women's clothing hair weave, and everything you need. <laughs> I got that plug for you, okay? I have two more questions left. And here's her name, and she also has a YouTube channel. How do you deal with unhappy customers? Girl, I'd be like, sorry, I can't help you. Okay, <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I actually help, I actually handle customers that are unhappy in the most professional manner as possible. Some people might be really nasty to me, and I'm like, I'm not going to let them shake me or, make, or mess up my day. I'm going to respond to them saying, I'm sorry for the inconvenience. I'm sorry you feel that way. I definitely respond in the most professional manner as possible. And if it's, you know, something I can work out to make them more happy, I definitely do offer suggestions as well. But if they get a little crazy, I'm like, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but I'd be like, girl, what's wrong with you? She also asked me, what made you decide you were going to start a business? So when I lost my job as a pharmacy technician, I really had no other choice. I was applying for jobs and nobody was hiring me. I tried so hard. So I just decided, light bulb. Let's try this out and see what happens. I took a leap of faith, started doing my store from home, and then I opened up my own storefront. It was meant also to be. Asked me, how did you know it was the right time? I just prayed on it and just jumped right in. I really didn't know. I was so scared. I was so scared. I was like, I have no options right now, so let's try and see. So lastly, I have a question here. Was there ever a time in the beginning where you felt less optimistic? Absolutely. Because I started my business from the ground and built it up. Like there's people that get stuff given to them and they jump into a space and they have everything all jazzy and whatnot, but I ain't throwing no shade because kudos to you because you got that money. I didn't have as I didn't have as much money as I wanted to have in order to start a business, but I had what I had and I just did what I had to do. And this every year I would add on to my store and make it better and better and better to my liking, but it was still not enough. I wanted to be more glamorous, but we can only do what we can. And I was so blessed to even do that. But I was discouraged. I'm like, dang. Her store looked nice. But then I would have a customer to come in like, oh, I love your store. It's so pretty and you're always open. <laughs> no shade, no shade, no shade. No shade. But anyway. Hats off to all the female entrepreneurs because we the best all day. So that sums up all the questions and thank you guys so much for 
submitting your questions and I will give everybody a shout out. Every lady that I got questions from, from. either a YouTuber or a boss. I got some business owners. Hey girl, hey. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for sending in these questions. If you want to know more about me, feel free to ask me anytime. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. Bye.